Hey guys, how's she going today? Little Blue's back. Got a GPS hooked on the front end of them. The same GPS we were using on Big Blue last year, we got it on Little Blue for spraying here. Uh, CP wants to be able to use Big Blue for a few things this afternoon with front end loader, so anyways. I just shut him off. He's been running for the past hour and a bit. And he's dry. He's not leaking fuel no more. So that's a positive. And Jeremy, thank you very much. He did get him set up so that when he's idling, he's not idling at 950 anymore. He's idling at about 690, 700 big difference there for idle speed anyway uh we got to get the chemicals in it's been agitating blah 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 uh we got to get to basically 450 gal even 475 ish about 1800 we can go with that see there's just a hairline little tiny crack right there but it's not leaking right right there but like I said the tanks not leaking so not at this point it's an old tank it could fucking explode at any time I'm sure if I filled it right to the top I'd find all kinds of uh, leaks but we had her running obviously you could see the water on the ground wet ground anyway all the nozzles were working nice so uh, we figured okay but now the wind is picked up according to the weather app it's only what is it uh 20 20 k wind gusting to 30 or something like that but it just it feels stronger than that than 20 so i don't know if we're gonna go right away it's the wind is supposed to die down this afternoon uh, towards evening there about 4 35 o'clock the wind is supposed to die down uh, there was a couple guys spraying they were just in the field over that way had a big old John Deere high clearance out there but whether they finished the field or whether they're still going I don't know I don't see them ripping around out there anymore so and they would be putting the chem down and the water down at a lot stronger pressure than what I would. Like this old machine of ours, he's only, well, you run it at basically 40 PSI. Those guys are probably running double that so they could handle going or even triple that. I'm assuming, I don't know nothing about those big machines, but, uh, they could uh so they could run in stronger wind so whether those guys finished over there or whether they parked the machine because of the wind i don't know but we're getting her ready so if i don't go here this afternoon i'll go tomorrow morning one or the other Anywho. We're going to finish filling this up and then I'll grab some coffee and we'll see what the wind is like and go from there. I'll let you guys go. We'll talk to y'all later. Alrighty, friends. If you can make that out. I'm overlapping. I know. I'm not quite used to it yet. You got to steer where the machine, the machine, it's not auto steer. It's auto steer. It's my steering there. Anyway, but we're spraying. Yeah, I got the odd nozzle tip that's not working a hundred percent, but uh, on average, they're all working pretty darn good. And this is a burn off. And if I don't get a hundred and ten percent kill job on the weeds, uh, will be ninety eight percent kill job on the weeds. So I think we'll be okay. 
Uh, the organic neighbor is harrowing his field and looks like he's picking stones too. So I did stay back. He does have his buffer zone for drift chem, but I stayed back about 10 feet away from the edge of the field also for him. And because uh, we're cutting the opening two rounds basically anyway, so if there's some weeds in the opening edge, it's no big deal. We're going to be cutting it for uh, green feed anyway. And let's get turned. So yeah, that's what's uh, going on. We're spraying. We're putting some uh, chemical down and we're going to try and clean up the weeds in these fields of mine and have a cleaner crop. Yahoo! It is a little breezy. We are getting a little drift, but we'll take the good with the bad and run with it. How's that sound? I couldn't go through right here because I felt it was too soft, so I went around that spot. Uh, yesterday when we were out here there was actually water in there. Mocha was laying in a water puddle right in the middle of that spot right down there. So uh, yeah, we went around it and here we are. We're going, we're going, going. We're giving her, give her, give her Swan River. Catch you guys later. Alrighty guys, so you can see the lights on but I'm watching the little white lines where I missed earlier so what am I doing well I'm just running out the last roughly 50 60 gallons of water uh, we bumped up the speed a little bit uh, I believe I'm supposed to run this at 30 psi I'm supposed to run it at uh, basically four, four and a half mile an hour. And we're going five and a half right now. Averaging 5.5. Sometimes we'll hit 5.6 or 5.7 going down a little bit of a knoll, but otherwise, yeah. So that's what we're doing now. So the field is basically done. Hopefully we get the kill we're looking for. Uh, what are we spraying? This is Glyphos Burn Off. And, uh, um, mixed with Oracle. Now, Oracle has got a couple, a conglomeration of a couple different things in it. One of them being the Camba. And I don't know shit about spray, but anyway, with the Dikamba. Uh, I get a 21 day residual and uh, what that allows me to do is get my crop in the ground and uh, with that 21 day residual it allows me to get my crop in the ground and gives the crop a chance to get up and get going and I'm not doing an in-crop spray, so I'm going to seed the crop a little heavier, pushing the three bushel an acre on this barley out here, and uh, use my crop to suppress or put competition against the weeds. In the past, in this particular field, what always happened was... I would seed the crop and the weeds would give competition to the crop or it would suppress the crop. In other words, it's setting the crop backwards and it would drown it out. So in this situation, I'm, I'm using my crop to uh, work against the weeds. That's the plan anyway. So yeah. So anyway, some areas are getting hit a little heavier, a little extra, so uh, no biggie. Uh, I got to have this sprayed at least 24 hours pre-seed. Uh, pre so this field is getting done right now, pending on weather. 
Uh, I'll probably spray our other field tomorrow afternoon. That's the plan. Anywho, every great plan is always subject to change. So, with that, until tomorrow, I'm going to let you all go. Give us the old thumbs up, comment, subscribe, share the videos, guys. You got to share them. Let's get that subscriber list up. Also, for all of you non-subscribers that are watching, get on there and hit that subscribe button. It don't cost you a darn thing. Fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. We'll catch y'all later. Morning, everyone. We're loading up. We're gonna hit the second field and get it sprayed off here this morning. The cam is in. Uh, four jugs of Glyphos 540, I guess that's rain fast. And a jug of Oracle. For another 45 acre farm piece, the coffee cup is sitting there empty. Little Blue is running. The neighbors way out there are uh, just filling up the unit to get rocking and rolling with the air seeder. They sprayed it yesterday morning and uh, they're seeding it. They were seeding yesterday already. I don't know what they're spraying with, but holy Hannah. My stuff, I was told to, it's got to be in the field on the ground for 24 hours would be best before I seed. Got my agitator running to agitate this stuff up, and what are we out here? Now we need another 100 gallons anyway. I need to get up to 450. And so soon soon but it'll probably take an hour anywho that's what's uh, going on here this morning anyway I'm gonna go for a walk and take a look at the cows and we'll talk to you guys all later alrighty guys so we're back up to uh, 10 cows in this crawl This girl is starting to make a bit of an udder, so she's definitely prego. That one's starting to get a little jiggly in the back end. She's starting to spring. She's supposed to be open. This one they said was pregnant, but she's starting to make udder, but she's not really springing very goddamn much, a little. She ain't gonna calve probably till the end of June. Piss me off. But anyway, so I've been saying that red one and that black one, I've been basically calling them open cows. Well, it's they're kind of showing like they wanna have a baby. So theoretically, minus those two, we had seven in here left to calve. Well, actually six, because that cow over there has a calf. But this one, this is a heifer. She was confirmed open and she ain't open. She definitely prego. She's going to be having a baby sooner than some of these cows that are in here. So we got her moved into the prego pen. So yeah, and just waiting on these other girls, like she needs to calve, and she needs to calve, and she needs to calve, and piss me off. What happened last year, a little bit of reabsorption on the fetus, or was it the bulls just said to hell with it we're not going to work this week and miss the heat cycle she should calve here pretty god darn quick that one or what I don't know 
Can't blame it on being super hot and dry, like lots of guys will say, because it wasn't. Not for us, not in July. July was uh, a wet one for us. Last year we were getting all kind, trying to get hay and done, and we were getting all kinds of rain. So, anyway, I gotta go get that red tub and get the salt blocks back in it. Talk to you later. Alrighty, so we got out to the field, made it from the corner here, all the way down this side, around that slough, and over to the gateway over there. And I had a nozzle that was plugged. Here comes CB, CP, my savior, and I'm a dumbass. I forgot to put the fucking lid on. I pulled the hose. Thanks, babe. Yes, you can go and have coffee now. So when I pulled the hose from the opposite side of the tank, and I went and watered the piggies. Um, when I left the yard, I forgot to put the fucking lid on. I just jumped in the tractor and started fucking driving. Anyways, we got the lid now. Thank God it didn't get fucked up. So, there. Alrighty, let's get back to spraying. Talk to you guys later. There's lots of green out here, lots of weeds. So, we smoking them. We gonna smoke them. Kill them dead. Get rid of them god darn weeds, right? Uh, about half done this field here this morning. Things are going all right. We've got one nozzle that every once in a while is not working just 100%. It'll kind of half-ass spray, half-ass drip, but whatever. We'll get her done, and it'll be what it'll be. And so, get you guys later. Alrighty, guys. Well, this field is done. Uh, ran it right out until I had zero pressure left, basically, so it's bone dry. Hit the heavy green spots, the low spots extra heavy. Had a little bit left over, so all of these heavy green spots, like that. And some more way back over that way. And more way to the north. We smoked them extra hard. And uh, yeah, so this field is now done. So that concludes our uh, spraying for this year because the other land that we got it's all organic and if it's not organic it's in hay and we're not spraying the hay out pump off anyways so now we just gotta fold up the wings which is a manual deal and head for home talk to you in a little bit alrighty guys well it's been an eventful go go kind of day uh, and if you look it looks just kind of hazy you see that it's not real sunshiny it's kind of hazy uh, that's the smoke moving back in from Alberta and a friggin neighbors right there we've got a do not burn advisory going on here within the RM and they were burning and it was burning actually pretty goddamn good for a little while there I don't know if it got into their into the bush over there but it's still kind of it's a lot smokier over in that neck of the woods so to speak than it is over here they actually had a semi truck parked down there uh, with a water tanker and I think they were putting water into the into the flame so to speak I wouldn't be burning a field right now if it was me anyway 
She's late in the afternoon. It's like four o'clock. Had a young family came. I've got two grapples, or I had two grap manure forks with grapple um, for sale. And a young family out from the Salt Coats area came and uh, bought one of them off of us. So I still got the one that hooks into, a, I believe, a 595 and 695 allied. It'll hook right in. Um, so if anybody's looking for a grapple, manure fork with grapple, allied, quick attach, uh, I've got one here and I'm wanting 600 bucks for it. And the grapple... Everything is home built. The tines on the grapple are actually made out of, uh, they're actually cultivator shanks. So yeah, if anybody's looking for one hell of a heavy duty grapple, come on over. And now we're hooked up to that thing. I'm gonna grab a water and a coffee and we're gonna go do some pre-working on some organic land. And it's not so much to break the ground up, it is, for nothing more than to uh, set the weeds back because I hope to be seeding that here in a couple of days as soon as our barley is in the ground which hopefully will start either tomorrow or the next day um, then we'll start into the oats over on the organic land and the alfalfa grass seed over on the organic land anyways I'm gonna let you guys go we'll catch you all later when we hit the field Alrighty guys, this field is uh, pretty god darn green with the old twitchy grasses. Quack grass, twitch grass, same thing. Just some people call it quack and some people call it twitch. For me, it's a pain in the ass. Especially being on organic land. And this field is soft. Yeah, over here we're getting some dust. But... Big Blue was spinning all four tires there a few times already, and the machine was completely out of the ground. So yeah, she's uh, pretty soft underneath. So you gotta really pay attention as to what's going on. There he is. 23 foot white 271 disc is uh, plowing her down. We'll do a pre-work on here, try and set the freaking twitch grass back a little bit so that when we come in with uh, the oat seed and the alfalfa grass, it gives it a chance to get going before the twitch takes it over. We're basically doing the exact same thing we did on the other piece uh, to the north. And the alfalfa's in there pretty nice, so... Anyways, I'm gonna keep rocking here. And, uh... We'll bring y'all back a little bit later. I ain't gonna finish this field tonight. So, we'll see what happens. I'll bring you... If I don't bring you back later today, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Catch you later. <laughs>